Hi, I'm Mark Moore. I'm the screenwriter of Galleon, and this is my screenwriter's blog. Right now, we're in historic St. Augustine, and behind me is the El Galleon Andalusia. This is a 178-foot Spanish galleon straight from Spain, and we're going to go talk to some of the crew. So come on with us. Enrique. Hi. Hi, Mark. Nice to meet you. The Thanks same. for taking the time and, uh, and talking with us off, uh, with this beautiful ship here. My pleasure. So, first off, you all sailed from Spain. Mm -hmm. So you sailed from Spain. Dominican for, Republic. Dominican Republic to uh -huh. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. And, and then, here yeah. for the Viva Florida 500. Uh -huh. So the Andalusia is owned by the now Victoria Foundation. Mm -hmm. Where was this beautiful ship actually built? Well, it was built in Punta Umbria which is a town in Huelva province, which is right beside the Seville province where the now, the now Victoria Foundation is based. And for a ship like this, because it is a replica, mm -hmm. what kind of techniques were involved in, in, in building? Were traditional nautical uh, shipbuilding techniques involved? Prior to the construction process, there was a thorough research, which took uh, more than three years. And we gathered well, our, our team of researchers, they gathered more, I mean, as many paintings and drawings as they could. For instance, the rigging was some of the parts which are as close as it can be. We, we had to do every single knot and arrangement exactly the same way they, they, they wow. did in the 17th century. It's amazing. It's absolutely gorgeous. There's not one section on this ship that is not a photograph because it's so beautiful. How many sailors do you have on the vessel that are working the ship? Well, right now we are around 20, but we had more when crossing the Atlantic. Some of them were volunteers and had to go back to Spain. Uh, maximum crew here can be 36 people. What's the biggest reward for you, aside from being a part of a crew like this, is it seeing all these different ports around the world? I mean, that's got to be pretty amazing to do mm -hmm. that. Well, as I always say, mm, people ask me, what, what's your favorite city or what's the best place you've seen? And I don't really get the... I mean, my memories are not so much based on the place I was, but with the people I was with. This year in Florida marks the 500th anniversary of the discovery of Florida by mm -hmm. Ponce de Leon. You were telling me earlier that there's been so many Spanish explorers and so many celebrations that this here in America is definitely a lot more of a celebration for us here than mm -hmm. it is for, for you in Spain, correct? Since the arrival of Columbus in 1492 to America, 90% of the islands in the Pacific Ocean were discovered, were actually discovered by Spanish sailors. And because you're using wind power, how long would the journey take back home to Spain? We are not sure, but if we, if we are able to choose a, the proper time in the year, I guess it will be similar to what we took from Spain to America, around 20, 30 days. Wow, that's a lot shorter than I expected it to be. Well, this boat is, is not holding gold or silver inside, so it's uh, much lighter than the, the galleons in the time. So. Well, speaking of gold and silver, and I'm glad you brought that <laughs> up, uh, in, in the movie Galleon, which I wrote, um, the Spanish galleon has one of the largest treasures ever found, and this ship weighs maximum 495 tons. Uh -huh. So by today's standards, on this particular ship, how much gold and silver do you think you could carry from Spain? Uh, well, the net weight of the boat is 150, and the gross tonnage is 500, so... A lot. <laughs> yeah. You hear that? A lot of gold and silver. <laughs> yeah. So is there any way you could take us around, show us a little bit of the ship? Sure. All yeah. right, let's go. This is the Noble Area, also known as the captain's quarters. So, let's go take a little sneak peek and see what, we, what kind of trouble we can get into. Now this is completely historically accurate, all the way down from the furniture to the fixtures. I think there's about 10 cannon parts, but I could be wrong. Let's check it out. You know, it wouldn't be a trip to St. Augustine without pirates trying to take over. That was amazing. So stay tuned for more of my screenwriter's blog coming up because next time we're going to be interviewing some of the biggest treasure hunters on the planet. See you next time.